Good morning. Good morning. Happy, Easter. Happy Easter. It is great to see you all here today. Um, a few announcements as we get started. Uh, we have a cool new thing in our sanctuary that is not going to apply to all of you. But we installed this last week, and by we I mean Andrew Mellows, uh, installed a hearing loop in this space. So if you have a hearing aid, you should be able to put it into its T-coil setting, and the microphones will just go straight to your ear. So it's kind of a cool thing. So uh, at any rate, hearing loop, if you have a hearing aid and you're not quite sure how that works, take a look at it. It's not going anywhere. Um, other announcements. We have a photographer this morning. Many of you got your photo with him right after or before the service over here. He's going to be here right after the service as well, just out to the patio and left. Uh, you can get a family portrait. And uh, so make that happen as well. That'll be great. I wanted to mention to you in front of you in the pew back is a welcome card. If you're visiting with us today, we'd love to stay in touch. You can fill that out and put it in one of the offering plates in the back or on the coffee bar. And in addition to that, I wanted to mention that that's where your offering could go. Also, the offering in the bulletin has a link if you would prefer to give electronically. I wanted to mention on the back cover of your bulletin, you can see a number of things coming up soon. We have a new music program for two to six-year-olds that is starting up, which is kind of great. We also are, are heading back to our Life Together dinners, and we'll be having them outside coming this Wednesday. You'll note that it is Schnitzel Fest 7. So uh, we're very excited about that. A lot of our programming over the next month with, um, with Easter, of course, and Earth Day, we are taking a look at all of the things related to care of creation on Wednesday evenings as well as Sunday mornings. I did want to mention that our very own Conrad Lautenbacher is going to be leading the Adult Forum next Sunday on weather and climate change. Conrad was the Admiral of the Pacific Fleet and former administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So we're very excited to have him uh, engage us on that topic next Sunday between services. <laughs> Lastly, one of the cool things we're bringing back, in addition to just having all of you here, is that we finish our Easter services singing the Hallelujah Chorus. So it's at the very end of the service, and uh, you'll see the choir come down onto the steps madly waving sheets of music that you can come forward and grab and join in. It is a super cool thing, so um, be prepared for that as well. I think that'll do it. Please stand as you are able.
is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, it be for the truth's story, but the Lord hath no word to man. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The stone of the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Lord, has this been done? It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come down. Have a seat. Good morning. Okay, I've got some big questions. Today we're celebrating. Does anybody know what we're celebrating today? Easter. Easter, yes. Easter. Ooh, I heard you say the answer. What did you say? Jesus. That's right. That's the answer. That's why we're celebrating today. And that's why we say Alleluia. Can all say Alleluia? Awesome. That's a pretty good reason to celebrate, right? So we've been following this journey from last Sunday, which Palm Sunday, we had our palms and we were waving them and we had our palm egg. And then every day we opened our egg and we saw the, what was next in the story until we were left with Good Friday and the cross where Jesus died. Yep. And then we have one last egg. One last egg. What do you think is in this egg? What do you think's in here? What do you think's in here? Nothing. Nothing. It's empty. <laughs> it's empty just like the tomb. Yeah, so the story goes that Jesus died on the cross, and then they buried him in the tomb. And his friends were really sad. And two of his friends, Mary, were really, really sad. They couldn't sleep. They were so sad. And they were scared of what was going to happen next after Jesus died. So they went to the tomb in the morning, and they saw that it was empty. And they were so excited. And they knew that they had to tell everybody the good news. Every time the pastors, Pastor Matt and Pastor Frederica read the gospel, gospel means good news. And today, the good news is that the tomb was empty and that death didn't win and that love won. Pretty cool. And this story helps to remind us that no matter what comes along in our life, no matter how scary things are or how hard things are, or for Jesus, the way that he loved people and the way that he cared for people made people angry and sad and scared. And so they crucified him on the cross. But the tomb was empty and death didn't win. Love won. God's love is so big that no matter what, love is bigger, and love gets to win. And the tomb was empty, which is the good news. Pretty cool, right? So today we celebrate that, that God's love is so big that love wins. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for that first Easter where the women got to tell the good news. And we thank you that love wins at the end of the day. Help us to share that love with all that we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Go back to your families.
I wanted to uh, start this morning with a story about life, a story about uh, love and family. I wanted to share the story of my mom's parents, Virgil and Priscilla Russell, um, also known as Grandpa and Grandma. So um, I remember one of the last times I had a chance to see them before one of them had passed and then the other. Um, I was in seminary in Columbus, Ohio. Marielle and I were driving from Southern California to Columbus and handily St. Louis can be found on that route and so we made that happen. My grandmother in her third of five pregnancies had contracted polio and uh, was fortunate in that while she was no longer able to walk, she could stand, she could drive a car. My memories are of her wheeling madly around the kitchen and then standing at the counter and working where she was and making it work as she went. When we visited, my grandfather at that point in life had also been through a tough chapter having been treated recently for leukemia. And so that was kind of a hard go in that. But I hadn't seen them in a while. It was great to see them. They're kind of hysterical together. And uh, so they took us out to dinner. And it was like a home country buffet. It was, uh, it was a great time to spend with them. And I remember they had a station wagon. They had to be the oldest couple in St. Louis with a station wagon. But at any rate, they had a station wagon because it was easy to get the wheelchair in the back, right? And I remember as we were going back out to the car, I thought, I'll hop up and assist in getting this wheelchair into the back of the car. And so Grandpa kind of folded it down, and I grabbed it. And when I got it off about three inches off the ground, I thought, this is heavier than I was anticipating it was going to be. <laughs> and my Grandpa looked at me, and then with no hair on his head, recent leukemia treatment said, I got it just grabbed it, just hauled it into the back of the, uh, the car, and we were on our way. And I was like, this guy, he is a tough, tough guy. He had grown up in the hills of northwest Arkansas, where you had shoes for church. Otherwise, you didn't bother with shoes a whole lot. He would tease his younger siblings because he was willing to run across the gravel road, and they wouldn't, so he could hassle them and escape to the other side. So where I'm going with this story is how he met my grandmother, because she's not from the hills of Arkansas. She's from downtown Boston, which a couple of things. It's curious they didn't need a translator. Even later in life, that was pretty clear. But the reason that they met was because of war. So at the beginning of the Second World War, my grandfather was in the army in the Quartermaster Corps, and Harvard had a compact administration program for those who were in the Quartermaster Corps. So he went to Boston, where he met this nice young nurse. There must have been a translator, I don't know. But it worked, and the rest of the story goes down through the generations. A story of polio and leukemia, a story of houses sold and bought, of love, of children, of all kinds of fabulous stories against a backdrop of war for a relationship that would have not otherwise have happened. I think all of us have been a bit glued to the news over the last couple of months here as we watch the horror coming out of Ukraine. And the thing that I'm continually struck by when I see these images is how strange in Western Europe the last 70 years have been. If we look at history, what we're seeing on television is actually kind of normal. As human beings, we do this to one another in every generation. And somehow in every generation, often it is men step up to do absolutely horrific things things to one another and to those who are vulnerable. All of these little pieces, children born, people becoming sick, lives being bonded together in marriage, death, these are all human stories that have been true throughout time. 
that we know these stories. There are maybe chapters that have not been in our own books, but we know the chapters because we've read them in other stories, right? The lives of those around us, loved ones, neighbors, friends, coworkers, people we went to school with. These chapters are known. It's one of those things where we can hear the first couple of sentences and we can sketch out in our minds how the rest of that chapter goes, right? So what do we have in today's gospel? In today's gospel, we have women heading to the tomb. Women are heading to the tomb to do what needs to be done to observe the traditions and the rituals of their people. Often, it is the women. And in the four Gospels, it's one of the core, consistent parts of the story. The women go, and they know how these stories go, just like we do. We notice that they get reminded by the angels. Remember what he said in Galilee? Right? What do you think? When they were walking to the tomb that morning, do you think Mary Magdalene was like, hey, don't sweat it. He said he was going to rise from the dead. It's going to be fine. Do you think that's what they were saying? I'm thinking no, because we know how these stories go. When someone dies and we go to the cemetery, we don't go back and expect something else to be the case. We know these stories. They were perplexed. It's kind of a kind Greek word, right? Like, this is super bizarre. Why is this tomb empty? We might come up with a number of reasons why the tomb might be empty, right? None of which involve somebody rising from the dead. None of them. And yet, something happens. Here we are, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miles away, 2,000 years later, gathering at 1045 in the morning on Sunday, April 17, 2022, to tell this story because something changed human history at that moment. Changed it in a way that was not the way the chapter was supposed to end. It was the gospel plot twist, you might say. The women show up at the tomb. They find that it is empty. They go back and tell the rest of the disciples. The men don't believe them. I'm not saying that's always the case. but So then Peter jumps up and has to run to the tomb to confirm it. So now it's official. And he runs back. It's a bit of an awkward scene. (laughs) There is something new that is happening. And here's the thing that I want you to remember. As Christians, when we gather in this space, we walk past the baptismal font. It is in the waters of baptism that we understand that we are called to expect that when the chapter gets dark. When the chapter feels heavy, that our God is with us in that place, bringing good news in a way that we couldn't write into the chapter if we tried. There is an unexpectedness to this story that gives us hope for today and tomorrow. As we hear so many tragic chapters in these days, there is a hope and a confidence in the gospel and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is as predictable as the flowers that bloom at this time of year, or perhaps even more so, like the dawn. It comes. So as we gather this day, Be mindful. Not every chapter in your book is going to be the same as someone else's or necessarily the same as the last chapter. 
but expect in the scary and dark spots Jesus Christ to bring new life where you could not have imagined it. Amen. our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being
On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb, and inspire us to share your abundant life. God, in your mercy. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants, and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. God, in your mercy. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world, especially the people of Ukraine. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants forced to leave their homelands. God, in your mercy. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Be especially with all those we name in our hearts or out loud now. God, in your mercy. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. God, in your mercy. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. God, in your mercy. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace. You can do that with a sign of the peace or a fist bump. You already are seated for the offering, as I see. <laughs> Please note that in your bulletins there are links to give. There are also offering plates at the end of at the exit of the church, where you can also really handily put in welcome cards. So if you're visiting with us and you want to stay in touch, please fill in a welcome card in the back of your front pew, and you can leave it there.
we see the destiny of every hope in you. Come among us in the power of your Holy Spirit, that your children may be blessed with power and grace, and that this bread and cup may become for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Hope and glory are our breath, merciful God, for you have rolled away the stone of despair, the stone of oppression, the stone of lament, the stone of grief, the stone of death, the stone of sin, the stone of fear. Come and stand among us and breathe on us your peace. Breathe on us your power, breathe on us your eternal life, that all who labor, all who stumble, all who hunger, and all who fall shall meet you in the breaking of the bread and be lifted up by your touch. Shape your church to be your risen body. Make our scars beautiful like your scars. Make our life life-giving like your life, and make our communion holy with your saints until you come again in glory and we eat with you in your kingdom, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God.
take a glass from the tray on the queue. As you come forward to receive communion, please take a glass from the tray on the pew at the front. You then will receive a piece of bread. The first assistant with the white ceramic chalice has wine. The second assistant with the green ceramic chalice has grape juice. We have gluten-free wafers here if you need them. And if you want to receive a blessing, please come forward with your arms crossed. All is ready. All are welcome.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as we witness to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. If you didn't get the chance to have your picture taken between services, you get your chance now. The photographer will be outside on the narthex, on the narthex patio on the left side. And of course, if you still haven't sung enough, sing, join the Hallelujah Choir and uh, they have extra sheet music for you ready. So just come up to the choir and sing. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Go in peace, share the good news. <laughs>